Uh, this next song is about being skinny. I'm something of an authority on this subject. And uh, uh, as, he's, as a, uh, Peter mentioned when I was introduced, I'm from St. Louis originally, but I, get, I did a sort of a circuitous route to get to Nashville. I did it via Chicago, Los Angeles to Nashville. I was in. And um, it was while living in Chicago, that I, I started learning especially some of this uh, older stuff. And I was living in Los Angeles that I realized I was skinny, because prior to that, I'd never really had an occasion to hang out with too many other people with very little clothing on. <laughs> um, occasionally on a real warm day at Wrigley Field in the bleachers, you know, you might get, but generally speaking, there wasn't very much comparative anatomy going on in places like Chicago. So it wasn't, I lived in, in California, I lived at, by Venice Beach, which you'll see all the time in music videos. Uh, Whenever there's a weightlifting cage shot, it's Venice Beach, okay? And cage is what they call it, and it was appropriate, actually. If you're going for that real bread in captivity look, that's... It's a and I lived a couple of blocks from the Gold's weightlifting cage, okay? So it was one of those. I had to walk past these lunkheads every damn day in life, all right? And... Uh, I don't have no very much of a sense of humor. I don't know if that's a steroid effect or just kind of person that's attracted to wanting to make themselves as big as a refrigerator to begin with. I'm not sure which that is. But in any event, you know, you tell them stuff like, if you go see a right doctor, you can get that swelling to go down. They didn't think any of that was, was funny, see? So, so I wrote them this little song. <laughs> Now I stand up six foot two, now I only wear one sixty-five. I got something good for you. Make you glad that you alive, yeah, baby. Don't you put me down, cause I'm a slender man. Will I do something for you, darling? I said ain't none of those big boys can Yeah honey once you get me started I won't stop until you do You don't need some guy the size of a frigid dare Laying all on top of you no, no, no. Don't you put me down cause I'm a slender man Well, I do something for you, darling. Who I said ain't none of those big boys can. There's one woman talking, said she thought she'd leave them, leave them skinny men alone. She don't know you want to find the sweetest meat, you got to get down closest to the bone. Mm -hmm. Don't you put me down, cause I'm a slender man. Well, I do something for you, darling. I said, ain't none of those big boys can. Now, you know, I heard this other woman talking, and she said, big is better. What you get is what you see. She never heard that old southern expression, said the man was all rooted no tree. Those of you that were English majors, please explain that to the other ones. Don't you put me down, cause I'm a slender man. Well, I do something for you, darling. Who I said ain't none of those big boys can. Thanks.
when I was a kid in St. Louis and still trying to figure out how to play, I used to go bother a bunch of the fellows in St. Louis, Henry Townsend, and a bunch of people. I actually got to know Henry, still do. He's 95 and still kicking and still picking. Um, one of the people we used to go, drive down to Memphis, which is a short, relatively short drive from St. Louis, and uh, go visit people, visited uh, Booker White and, uh, and Sleepy John Estes, who lived in Brownsville, and, and Furry Lewis, who was my personal hero. I decided it might be worthwhile to try to become an old blues musician based on a visit to Furry's house. When I got there, he had, he's sitting in the middle of the afternoon drinking beer, and he had three women in his house. One of whom was bringing him a hot meal, the other of whom was bringing him back his ironing, and the third of whom was on the phone hollering at people downtown about getting his unemployment check to him in a little more, in a little, a little more regular fashion, okay? So I, I thought he's got one girl talking about money for him, and another one's cooking for him, and another one's fixed up his clothes, and he's just sitting around drinking beer going, how are you boys doing? And I thought, that don't look bad. I mean, that's... I've seen a lot of guys that used to do roofing work and stuff. Didn't look like they was having anywhere near as nice a retirement as this. So, and I've done roofing work, and it's much scarier than playing in saloons. That's for sure. So, this little song that Furry used to do is called Judge Harsh Blues, and he's got he had him. This I, I suspect this is a judge he was personally afraid of. Because he's got other songs about judges where he names them by name. There's one Judge Boucher, and there's one that's a Judge Green. And then this guy, he apparently was, was wanted to keep at a fairly much of like an arms, arms length distance or county length distance, maybe. <laughs> Unfortunately, those of us who came around visiting Furry lost him his job with the city. He was sweeping the streets. Of, uh, he was sweeping Beale Street on one leg because he had another leg cut off in a railroad accident back in the 20s. So he's one-legged guy out there sweeping. And we started coming around, and they said, well, oh, no, he's, he's over there. But, you know, I don't think that's the same guy. He's not as old as you think he is. I'm like, well, I don't know. You know he's we got records from him from 1928. No, no, that couldn't be the same guy. And apparently he'd lied like a rug to get this job with the city. And when people showed up and started saying, well, you know, he's actually like 68. They were like, well, hell, he should have retired. So <laughs> luckily the record business worked out for him because since we lost him his job with the city. <laughs> Good morning, Judge, and what may be my fine? Good morning, Judge, and what may be my fine? Good morning, Judge, and what may be my fine? It's a dollar now and eleven twenty nine. My baby came running with a hundred dollars in her hand. My baby came running with a hundred dollars in her hand. My baby came running with a hundred dollars in her hand. Said Judge Hans, now won't you free my man? Said a hunter won't do, you gotta run and bring me three. Well, a hunter won't do, you gotta run and bring me three. Yeah, a hunter won't do, you gotta run and bring me three. Now to keep your man out of penitentiary. What you got today, baby? Well, they accuse me of murder and I ain't harmed a man. Not accuse me of murder and I ain't harmed a man. Well, they accuse me of murder and I ain't raised my hand. Yeah, they talk about forgery and I can't read my name. Said, please, Judge Hawes, make it lies you possibly can. Said, please, Judge Hawes, make it lies you possibly can. Well, please, Judge Hawes, make it lies you possibly can. Well, I ain't done no work and I don't know when. This ain't no work. Well, good morning, Judge, and what may be my fine? Good morning, Judge, and what may be my fine? Good morning, Judge, and what may be my fine? It's a dollar now and eleven twenty-nine.
Thanks. I switch around between guitars a lot. It's a real feeble effort on my part to appear multi-instrumental with them. <laughs> Without the actual ugly necessity of really learning and practicing any other instruments. So it's, a, it's a visual trick I got from watching a lot of rock and roll guys and I played concerts with. You bring 17 or 18 guitars, it looks like you really know how to play a lot of stuff. And so, yeah, so it's a duo. A real old song that I got off a of Blind Blake record and I thought, I thought I knew a lot about this song, and then I played in a little town. There's a town I go play a festival in every year called Osceola, Arkansas. It's north of Memphis. It's still a delta town. People think the delta is starts south of Memphis, and that's just not the case. In fact, the delta is anywhere you can get the river to flood up real good. And that's, that's pretty much where the delta is. And so this is a, it's still a delta town. And so famous blues, it's famous on the blues route because it was the town that you used to have to stop, you used to stop in on your way to uh, St. Louis and Chicago and points north, coming out of Mississippi and in, uh, in Memphis. And apparently the gentleman who owned a, a pretty uh, successful s saloon in this town had B.B. Had King played there and Sonny Boy Williamson played there and all the way back into the 30s, all of the old legendary guys all played there. And, little intimidating sitting there with Highway 61 is the next street out and there's all these people that have actually heard B.B. King when he was he was young and I was busy being born but um, I played this song and, and the lady who was said well I'm 92 and that song was old when I was a little girl and I thought well I, this is a lot older than I thought it was apparently <laughs> As they say, the song is older than dirt. Probably singing this song on the day they invented dirt. There's a great big mystery. Man, it so is worrying me. Well, it's daddy, why daddy? It's daddy, why daddy? Now will somebody tell me what did it, what did it mean? I got up and I walked around and somebody said, look who's back in town, Mr. Diddy, why did it? Mr. Diddy, why did it? Now will somebody tell me what did it, what did it mean? Some little mama about four feet four said, Come on, Papa, gotta give me some more. Well, your daddy, why did he? Said, Your daddy, why did he? Now, will somebody tell me what daddy, why did he mean? You know, I went into church and put my hat on the seat. The woman sat down and said, Daddy, you must be sweet. Mr. Daddy, why did he? Mr. Daddy, why did he? Hey, I wish somebody tell me what the daddy, why did it mean? And I said, Sister, I'll soon be gone. Why don't you give me that thing you've been sitting on? I mean, your daddy, why did he? I mean, my hat, baby, let's get up off my hat. What you say? Now, I wish somebody tell me what the daddy, why did it mean? Some idea. Uh -huh. And then I went, got put out of church, cause to talk about Diddy, why did it too much, Mr. Diddy, why did it? Mr. Diddy, why did it? Now, will somebody tell me what the Diddy, why did it mean? There's a great big mystery. Man, and it so is worrying me. Well, it's daddy, why did it? Oh, it's daddy, why did it? Will somebody tell me what daddy, why did it mean? Will somebody tell me what daddy, why did it mean? 
Thanks. Well, let's see. This is a song of mine that was recorded by a lady named Maria Moldar. Some of you may remember her. She had a big hit called Midnight at the Oasis and The Coolest Poster. Boy, that's a, that's a long time ago, and I still remember that poster in exquisite detail, actually. <laughs> it was, uh, she had a little halter top that was tied here and this little Daisy Duke cut off. Well, anyhow, um, I was still in high school, and that, that poster was my social life in 10th grade, actually. <laughs> Um, she cut this on an album called uh, Southland of the Heart, and uh, I think the label is called American Musical Heritage, which how I ended up being part of American Musical Heritage, I'm not really, it's a long way around the pike, but that's how desperate they've got. This is what the deal is. So this is a little song called Blues Gives a Lesson. <laughs> and this goes out to Gabriel Hearns of St. Louis. Now you might be a playboy, said a big time Romeo. Drive those ladies crazy everywhere you go. Man, for you know it, all your playing days is through. Them sweet young things will say, I don't want some old fool like you. I said, you, you better count your blessing. Now the more might be your turn. Head and blues gives a lesson that everybody's got to learn. Yeah, you might be Mr. Normal, middle of the road. And then you'll wake up one fine morning Feel like you're ready to explode. Well, first you quit your job, and then you leave your wife, and grab some little bombshell. Yes, and blow apart your life. I said, you better count your blessings. Now the more might be your turn. Well, them blues gives a lesson that everybody's got to learn. You do everything they tell you. You do everything you should. There are still a million ways you can mess yourself up good. You never sign no contract. Man, you got no guarantees. Say one day walk and talk. And the next down on your knees. You might have lots of money. Buy you anything you want. Yeah, a mansion on a hill and a big old Cadillac right out front. Boy, before you know it, you got to lay your burden down. Want all your million dollars, raise you back up out the ground. I said, you better count your blessings. Now the more might be your turn. Head and blues gives a lesson that everybody's got to learn. Head and blues gives a lesson that everybody's got to learn.
Thanks. Thanks. I don't know if you have this phenomenon here. We have a phenomenon in Nashville because we have the music business, and everybody thinks, well, hell, country music, it can't be that hard. So they all <laughs> decide they're going to come here and take a shot at it, you know. If you've got anything, even in your high school newspaper, that rhymed, you pretty much figure you're ready to go write lyrics in Nashville. And I've seen a guitar once. I'm ready, you know. So we have a lot of we have a lot of people that move there, and bless their hearts, a lot of people that come out of the folk scene up in the Northeast, you know, the, where they write these six and seven minute songs to the person that left them, and they tell the entire history of the relationship and how crappy they feel have now felt for years since then, and it. The, would would be essentially half of an album side if they still made albums, okay? Kind of songs and there's not really a large market for that in Nashville. I have to if you if that's the kind of songs you write, you you want to learn the word edit. In any event, we have a, a lot of people come there and become try to become instant southerners. You know what I mean? It, you know the one but one trip to Boot Barn and uh and conspicuously placed instant grits somewhere on there kitchen counter and they're all, they figure they're all set, see, that's, a, that's, yeah, instant grits, exactly, invented for people in Pennsylvania so they could feel down home, exactly right, so this is a little song called She Ain't No Southern Girl, because we had a, we, well, we had this girl who made the round of the songwriters, I won't mention her name, because I don't remember it, um, Made the round of the songwriter thing for a while, and she had this whole song about, I'm a Southern girl now, and every single, every single verse in it was like, uh, no Southerner I know would admit to any of this stuff. You know, she, for example, she bragged about not going to church, and I, I mean, I don't, I don't brag about it. <laughs> I don't always make it, you know, but I don't brag about it. So, so this is a little song called She Ain't No Southern Girl. The reason I wrote this song is because it's an excuse to use the one Chet Atkins lick I've ever been able to steal. So I'll play it for you. Sing. Here it come and here it is. She don't like stock cars or barbecue. She don't like football or boys who do. She been living down here about a year or two, but she ain't no southern girl. She don't wear ball caps. She hates that look, she thinks we'll all talk like William Faulkner's books. Can't load a shotgun or bait her own hook. She ain't no southern girl. Need to slow down, put that New York state of mind up on her back shelf. Go find a small town and take a little time and try to be sweet in spite of herself. She don't eat catfish or candied yams. She don't say, hey y'all, or sir and ma'am. Can't drive a stick with a good hot damn, no. She ain't no southern girl. She need to slow down, put that New York state of mind up on her back self. Go find a small town and take a little time and try to be sweet in spite of herself. She ain't a mean girl. She sure ain't dumb. But as the manners, this child could use her some. They don't know no better way back where she's from. She ain't no southern girl. She can't help it. She ain't no southern girl, poor little darling. Now. She ain't no southern girl. Oh, bless her heart now. She sure ain't no southern girl. Thanks. That's supposed to be kind of like a Louis Jordan and his Timpani Five kind of song, but it's just, it's Dave McKenzie and his left hand at noon is what the, is the way it works out. Uh, well, let's see, we'll do it. This is a Robert Johnson song. As I, I played... I go up to St. Louis and play a lot because that's where I'm from originally, and, and they're sweet enough that they actually play me on the radio, and I can get there in a half a day's drive. So I go play a lot in St. Louis. And um, 
One of the things that I do is there's a man named Henry Townsend who is the guy as far as the blues scene there. He's pl- he played with Robert Johnson like that, okay? Like back in the 20s, he played with Petey Wheatstraw and all these guys that are just like names, legendary names that are, I've seen in books and on the backs of records and stuff. And uh, Henry's uh, 95. I just played his 95th birthday. And uh, he always asks if I play him a Robert Johnson song. He, he's always worried somehow that we're going to forget Robert Johnson's. Well, are people still listening to Robert Johnson's music? And I said, yeah, they're still listening to Robert Johnson's music. Uh, last time I saw was in Los Angeles. They had a, he had a big poster up on Sunset Strip, so he's apparently he's still doing pretty good in his career, considering he's been gone for 60 years. That's a little song that I used to scare away the church ladies in Nashville. Now, I, I you know... Bless their hearts, I don't have any problem with them, but it's just I don't want to talk to anybody at 6 o'clock in the morning, okay? And they have a tendency to want to show up, get started early, see, so they can hit more households before we all go to work. That's the theory. So 6 o'clock in the morning, they want to hand you a pamphlet and see that you're all right, son, and that you're, you know, that thing, and I just don't have any time for it. So I got these outdoor speakers, and I got that cue this song called Me and the Devil Blues by Robert Johnson. And if I hear a Cadillac door slam anywhere near my house, I flip, flip this little switch, and it usually just scatters them. You can hear these little high heels clicking down the black asphalt. And like, it's terrible, isn't it? Just terrible. But you have to do something, you know what I mean? Because I was getting phone calls for a long time about a free dancing lesson. And it was since it wasn't, they weren't trying to charge me anything for it. It wasn't a solicitation. It was legal. And I finally told her, look, you know, I'd be interested. But since I lost this leg to diabetes, I just don't think I offer any more dance with this. This is roughly on a par with that. I'm not running for mayor in Nashville. What do I care? This morning, you knock upon my door. Said it was early this morning. Who you knocked upon my door? That's when I said, Hello, Satan. I do believe it's time to go. Yeah, me and the devil, we were walking side by side. Me and the devil, we was walking side by side. He said, son, you're going to have to shoot your woman. I believe for you be satisfied. Now she said she don't see why Well, I would dog her around Said she don't see why Who I would dog her around God must be my own evil spirit mm, Coming deep down from the ground Out on a highway side Ooh, you can bear my body Mm, Out on a highway side So my old evil spirit Boy can catch a greyhound bus and ride It was early this morning 
You knock upon my, you knock upon my, came knocking on my door was early this morning. Who you knocked upon my door? I said, hell on Satan, I do believe it's time to go. Let's see what this other one right here real quick. There's a song called Cairo. It's about the town Cairo, Illinois. It's spelled Cairo, but pronounced Cairo. The town was vastly improved by riverboat gambling. Gave them something to do. No, I've been there. I got a cousin that lives outside there. The only thing there was to do otherwise on the weekend was just go out and look at the river, see if anybody got killed and floated down from St. Louis. That was it. So now there's something to do. And this is originally also a Henry Townsend song. He got it from Henry Spaulding and changed the words around because he couldn't understand the record, and I couldn't understand Henry's record, so here we go. Cairo, Cairo is my baby's home. And I'm talking about Cairo. Ooh, Cairo is my baby's home. Now you look for me in Cairo. Ooh, anytime you see me gone. You know them sweet things in St. Louis, boy, they won't pay me no mind. I got this country girl, and Cairo says she's loving and she's kind. And Cairo, Cairo is my baby's home. Now you look for me in Cairo Anytime you see me gone Yeah, them hoodoo girls in New Orleans Put a spell around your heart I got this Baptist girl in Cairo Been a blessing from the start in Cairo Cairo is my baby's home Now you look for me in Cairo Ooh, anytime you see me gone Them fine head girls in Memphis, man, they won't look at me twice. I got this Bigfoot girl in Cairo, says she's nappy and she's nice in Cairo. Cairo is my baby's home. Well, you look for me in Cairo anytime you see me gone. Now I'm talking about Cairo. Cairo is my baby's home. Now I'm talking about Cairo. Cairo is my baby's home. Well, you look for me in Cairo anytime you see me gone. Now you look for me in Cairo anytime you see me gone. Said you can look for me in Cairo anytime you up and see me gone. Cairo. Thanks, y'all. I'm going to switch over again real quick here. Um, my wife would like me to remind you that I, if you would like to buy a CD, we'd be happy to sell you one. We have a... We have a law in Tennessee. I don't think they have it here, but in Nashville, you have part of the money has to go to charity. I didn't know that when I moved to Nashville. I would have just stopped at Memphis, but um, <laughs> at the time, I figured, what the heck? I got all this extra gasoline. Let's go check it out. You know, and I got there and stuff, and it turns out that you have to have a charity. It's a law there. So, and by the time I got there, hillbilly singers had bought up all the really coolie cool diseases, you know, all the stuff that anybody could relate to. I was scrambling for a while trying to find one. We finally settled on the halfway house for girls who won't go all the way, so. Your dollars could make that difference, friends. 
<laughs> it's moments like this when I'm glad that I'm not one of them guys with the 17 guitars, though, because I... You know, we could we could be here for days with me tuning 17 guitars. <laughs> Even if it is free, it's still got to have some element of entertainment to it. So, <laughs> I played this little beer joint down in Alabama, and I had a whole table full of these old boys that were like, "Man, you tune a lot on stage." And I said, "Well, I can hear the difference. I mean, I can tell when it's out of tune, and it bothers me." So well, yeah, but we just seen the Rolling Stones, and they played for almost two hours, and they didn't tune once. I said, "Did you notice they had this guy backstage who would come out every now and then and hand him a fresh one?" And he said, "Well, you should get you a guy like that." <laughs> I finally, I finally, man, the way I finally explained it to him was, I said, "Look, how much was it to see the Rolling Stones?" And he said, "It was eighty-five dollars." And I said, "And how much was it to get in here tonight?" And he said, "Well, it was three. And I said, and there are four of you, so do the math on that. That's the price of a running used car, actually. <laughs> or at least in that part of Alabama, it was. Uh, so we'll do a song here by I've had guys give me a gr grief for a long time now. They say Dave McKenzie that doesn't sound like a blues man's name and I said well I'm not real sure what a blues man's name sounds like so I'll play you a song by the first African American guitar player who was not a preacher or anything just regular just musician to ever make a record his name is Sylvester Weaver okay 1923 and his partner was Walter Beasley so Sylvester Weaver and Walter Beasley, which sound like they should be in adjusting insurance or maybe they should <laughs> dental hygienists or something instead of bluesmen, but these are two these are two African American gentlemen from Louisville, Kentucky, and that was what their names was. So it's possible you don't have to be big bad little blind lefty mojo something or other. And I'll play you this song that Sylvester cut, and it ended up being a big hit for Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys later on. They took his arrangement, they obviously had, since he was a solo act and they had 12 guys in the band, they spread it out a little bit more than he was able to do. But all of the original pieces from Sylvester Weaver's uh, steel guitar rag are intact on the Bob Wills record. That's the big hit. They took everything just, and I'm going to try to play it more like Sylvester because... It's got to be just the right amount out of tune so it sounds authentic and it's, it's hard for me because I have perfect pitch. <laughs> nobody, nobody else. I got to start telling that joke at the beginning of the show and it's likely to be believed. <laughs> so, so we'll do a little steel guitar rag and I'll stick one of my own tunes on here at the end of it here.
You know, I got a girl named Fannie Mae, she pretty as can be. Now I got a girl named Fannie Mae, said she's the one for me. And I said, hey, Miss Fannie, pretty Fannie Mae. Hey, Miss Fannie, honey, what you say? You know what I like about Fannie Mae? Said she got pretty hair, but if I get it all messed up, little Fannie Mae don't care. Said, hey, Miss Fannie, pretty Fannie Mae. Hey, Miss Fanny, honey, what you say? You know, Fanny may come down the street, she walking all alone, and she can make them old men smile, make them young boys moan. Said, God Almighty, Fanny may, honey, what you trying to do? Now you wear that little cotton dress, well, the sun come shining through, and I said, Hey, Miss Fanny, pretty Fanny may. Hey, Miss Fanny, honey, what you say now? Hey, Miss Fanny, pretty Fanny Mae. Hey, Miss Fanny, honey, what you say? Uh, this next tune is about bugs and rodents, and I don't have to explain that to you all because you live in the south and by the water, so I don't really have to explain that here. I do sometimes further north. I go back to Chicago every now and then, and they think they got bugs there. <laughs> and I say it's kind of like comparing a G.I. Joe doll to a full-dress Marine <laughs> with all the field gear, comparatively speaking. So this is a song that was inspired by a cockroach that I tripped over in Corpus Christi, Texas. I thought it was a motorcycle helmet, okay, that somebody left laying in front of the place and then it walked off. <laughs> Turned sideways, had gang graffiti sprayed on it, so it's, you know, that's what we're talking about here. So. <laughs> well, I got rats in my bedroom. Roaches keep me woke at night. Said, I got rats in my bedroom. I got roaches keep me woke at night. You know, I see some things out in my kitchen. Steal a starving man's appetite. Well, them people up north think they got some big bugs. You ought to see these bugs we got down south. I had a cockroach walk across my kitchen table. He had a ham hock in his mouth, and I got rats in my bedroom. I got roaches keep me woke at night. And I see some things out in my kitchen. Steal a starving man's appetite. Them roaches jump down on a rat's back and they race them round the floor. They killed and skinned and ate my cat. And they drove my dog outdoors and I got rats in my bedroom. I got roaches keep me woke at night. I seen some things out in my kitchen. Steal a starving man's appetite. my decon they drank up all my rage 
When they started snorting up that black flag, though, see that? That's when I got afraid right there. See? They said, son, if you're trying to kill us, you need to get some strong stuff in this place. It's the only way we're dying right now, Bubba. It's laughing in your face, and I got rats in my bedroom. I got roaches keep me woke at night. And I seen some things out in my kitchen. Steal a starving man's appetite. And baby, please don't turn on that light. Don't do it. Thanks. Thanks. Well, we got time for one more little song here. I'm going to end up with a uh, song by a man named Robert Jr. Lockwood, who's um, originally from Mississippi. He lives in Cleveland now. And um, Robert Jr. is a very interesting guitar player. If you get him down here, if you get a chance to go see him, go. he's curious. He plays a 12-string electric guitar, and he will start songs in the key of B. <laughs> yeah. I try to play along with that sometime. and Just, just, just trying to understand why much less how he does that is could be pretty much of a life's work in any event i had a good i had the good fortune to meet mr lockwood uh at henry townsend's birthday for the 94th birthday not the 95th the last one but the one before this at which point uh, henry was 94 robert jr was 87 and i was at the time 55 and felt young it was just fabulous. You know, they were both looking at me, and it was really, it was that old vaudeville joke where they really did have clothes older than me, you know? <laughs> that old vaudeville joke. That, uh, uh, this is Robert Jr.'s, one of his big songs. Just come, come on, take a little walk with me. I want to thank the library here for having this program, uh, Gary Irwin for having me be here, and y'all for showing up. This is just so much more fun when there's actually people in these chairs. You have no idea. It's just so much more fun for me. <laughs> Take a little walk with me And hey You come on and take a little walk with me Where well, we're going back now, baby Honey, where we long to be Yeah, come on, pretty baby You know the moon is shining bright Walk on the wrong side, mom, and I'm so gonna walk you right crying. Hey, you come on and take a little walk with me. Where well, we're going back now, baby. Honey, where we long to be. Yeah, come on, pretty baby. You know the moon is hanging low. Take it to a place I know the police show sure don't go crying. Hey. You come on and take a little walk with me. Where well, we're going back now, babe. Honey, where we long to be. Come on, pretty baby, you know the moon is hanging low. Take it to a place I know where the police show sure don't go crying. Hey, you come on and take a little walk with me. Well, we're going back now, babe. Honey, where we long to be? I come on. You come on and take a little walk with me. Come on and take a little walk with me.
take a little walk with me Well, we're going back now, babe Honey, where we long to be You can't come on Thank y'all. Thanks, that was really fun. Thank y'all. I'm supposed to be standing up for you. Wait a minute. All right, well, peek at one more little song then. I was like, I don't want to get I don't want to get us thrown out of here because I don't they may want this room for a Christian science meeting or something later on. So I don't want to get us in any trouble here. No, they got their own reading rooms. What am I thinking? Well, it's a, it's a classic Southern thing to finish up with a spiritual, and that's what I'll do here. This is a little tune that I don't write a lot of spirituals, but every now and then one of them falls out of the sky into my lap. And uh, if that happens to you, pay attention. It's my pay attention. Okay, when the songs come completely unbidden, you're intended to have that one. So stop, write it down, even if you don't get back to it for a while, you'll get back to it eventually. It's a little song called If I Lose My Way, and uh, it was partly started in Norway. I, when, when you tell people that you go to Europe and they play blues and you go to Europe, it sounds like, oh, well, great, Café Ule on the Champs-Élysées. And sometimes it's like bread that looks like it's made out of recycled toilet paper rolls in Norway instead, which is kind of where this one goes. And I played this over there, and they kind of go, well, they, they think we're funny because we're spiritual. But they point out all of these churches they got there, 15, 1,600 years old, but there's nobody in there on Sunday. You look in, there's my half a dozen little old ladies that are in there, and, and one guy, and that's it. And I, I keep trying to explain, well, you know, we, maybe we're going to church and old boarded up Popeye's fried chickens, but there's people in there on Sunday. See, it's, it's a kind of a different deal, and it doesn't matter if it's got a chalkboard sign in front announcing when the services are. People around there know when it is, anyhow. So, Okay, it's time to go to work, buddy. Now if I lose my way, I shall be found. If I lose my way, I shall be found. On the darkest day, Yeah, the hardest part of town If I lose my way, I shall be found Though I walk in chains, I shall be free Though I walk in chains, I shall be free. You know this world of pain, it cannot imprison me. Though I walk in chains, I shall be free. way I shall be found. You know my street feet may stray, but there'll be no turning around. If I lose my way, I shall be found. If I lose my way, I shall be found. That's what I'm hoping for all of us. Amen. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it.